In this video, we're going to cover CSS gradients. Now, up to now, we've sort of been using solid colors in CSS, but you can also create gradient backgrounds, and that involves using multiple colors. At a minimum, you would use two colors, and that sort of gives you a gradient, but you can also add more colors. And usually the effect you get is one color will fade into another color. And so it's kind of a cool effect that you can create using CSS. Now the most widely used gradient is called the linear gradient. And so that's what we're gonna cover in this video. So you can see here, I've just created a very simple div and I've got some simple CSS code that we're going to start out with. And our web page, of course, is blank because we haven't created the gradient yet. Now, we really don't need to use this HTML document. This is going to stay as is. We're only going to be working out of CSS, so we can go ahead and just close this. And uh, yeah, we better save it. And let's just sort of resize everything here. We're going to need a little bit more space for these gradients, so we'll just kind of resize these images. And there we go. This looks much better. Okay, and so the property we're going to be using to create the gradients is the background property. Now you can also use the background hyphen image property, but we're not gonna use that in this video. We may talk about that later on at some point, but we're just gonna use the background property. Now the first thing we wanna do is set the color to blue. You can put any color you want in here, of course, but we're just gonna set the background initially to blue. Now the reason we wanna do this is that if the browser that the user is using does not support gradients, you wanna have a fallback. And in this case, it would fall back to blue, but you can put whatever you want here. Now the chances these days that the user's browser wouldn't support gradients is pretty slim because most of the browsers today, especially Google Chrome and Firefox, automatically download updates. And so chances are they probably have the latest and greatest version of whatever browser they are using. But this is a good fallback. So let's save this and we'll go ahead and refresh our page and we get a nice blue color here. But that's obviously not going to be our gradient. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and re-specify the background property, and then we're going to go ahead and create our gradient. Now there is a CSS function that we use inside of our background property, and it is called the linear gradient. That's what it is. And if you know anything about functions, they come with parentheses. And really all you need to know here is here's where we put in our values. This is where we're going to create our gradient. And we're going to use two colors. So the first one we're gonna specify is blue, and then we're gonna specify yellow. And so this should give us a nice little gradient, which we'll see in a second. And if we hit refresh, there you can see, we've got our gradient. Now, the default movement of the linear gradient is in a top-down order. So the top, of course, is blue, and here's the bottom, and it moves in a top-down manner, as you can see. And you'll see here, here's this sort of blend I was talking about, so they sort of bleed into each other, and that's that gradient effect that we're looking for. Now, what if you didn't want this to go in top down? What if you wanted to move this in a different direction? Well, we can add another value here right at the beginning. We can go to right, and we just put a comma there, and now the colors will move from left to right. So let's go ahead and save this. And if you hit refresh, see how that works? Now you sort of have this sideways movement. By the way, if you wanted to start this from the left, you would just put to left here. So that's how that works. But it doesn't stop there. You can actually move this in angles if you want. Pretty cool stuff. And all we have to do here is say to top right. Let's save this again. Let's hit refresh. And now you can see this is moving in an angle now. It's moving to to top right. Now, if you wanted to move this to the bottom, you would just say to bottom right. I think you get the idea. Or to bottom left. And so it's kind of neat as you can move it in angles. Ah, but you can actually move it in custom angles. Yes, and this is where we actually can specify a degrees. So we could say uh, we want to move this 30 degrees. So we put in 30, and then you just put in the keyword DEG right after that, and it'll move it 30 degrees now. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's refresh it, and you can see we're now moving this 30 degrees. If you wanted to put this at 45 degrees, you could do that as well. And you can see now it's moving 45 degrees. So this gives you a little bit more control of the angle that you want to move the colors in. Now, as I said, you can add as many colors as you want. So let's add uh, green into the mix here. So now we're going to do three colors. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll refresh. And now you can see we've got three different colors here. Green, blue, and yellow. Now let's actually switch back to blue and yellow. And we'll just quickly refresh our page here get this back to where we were. Now, what if you wanted a particular color to dominate over the other color? Well, there's a way to do that. And what you can do is put in percentages in here. So we can put after this yellow, 20%. And I'll show you how this works in a second. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll refresh. 
And there you can see yellow dominates. Now you're probably saying, wait a minute, weren't you saying here yellow should only take up 20%? That's actually not what this means. What it means is, and let me think how to explain this. Okay, so remember this goes in a top-down order. So what we're saying here is at 20% down, start yellow. Basically, that's where we want you to start painting the background yellow. So that's what happens. We get about 20% down here and boom, everything else from that point on is going to be yellow. So that's how this percentage works. It is a little bit confusing, but it's basically simple once you understand it. Now, what if you didn't want this bleed effect here? What if you just wanted this to be a straight line across? You didn't want any bleeding effect here. Well, you can actually do this by having both of these equal out to 100%. So we can say we want yellow 50%. And then we can say we want blue 50%. And basically what this will do is give you a straight line across. And I'll show you that. We'll refresh the page and there you go. We lose that sort of gradient effect. So again, if you don't want that bleed effect, you have to give percentages to all the colors and then you'll just get sort of this straight line. Okay, that is going to do it for linear gradients. See you guys in the next video.